I'm backed by the nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. After the roaring success of the unified payments interface, banks do not want to let go of any opportunity to further a digital revolution in the country. Last week, Business Standard reported that nine banks have picked up stakes in the Open Network for Digital Commerce, ONDC. These include some big players like SBI, HDFC and ICICI, which own a 6.35% stake each. NPCI is also looking to pick up a stake in the entity expected to democratize digital commerce. Good morning, my name is Ishan Gera and you're watching the Business Standard Banking Show. In today's episode, we shall highlight the important banking developments of the week, including the inflation numbers and their impact. We have an interview lined up with IDBI Bank MD and CEO Rakesh Sharma. Our experts explain 81 bonds in our Banking for You section and banking sector expert Tamal Bandopadhyay sheds light on the digital lending model in India. We shall discuss the results from the last poll at the end of the episode and ask you the question for this week. So stay tuned. First, here are the significant developments of the week. After dipping below 7% for a month, the inflation reading was back to 7% again in August. Meanwhile, ECB announced a rate hike of 75 basis points last week, and the Fed is expected to follow suit. But the government believes that inflation management is not only a domain of the monetary policy. At a seminar, FM Nirmala Sitaraman said that relying on just monetary policy has proved ineffective in many economies. Regardless, as RBI's MPC meeting draws closer, the discussions have shifted from a 25 to 35 basis point hike to a 35 to 50 basis point increase. Besides inflation, another issue that the central bank and the government are intent on tackling is the growing menace of illegal digital lending apps. A meeting chaired by the finance minister decided that RBI shall create a white list of legal digital lending apps to be permitted on the App Store. The central bank has released new rules for digital lending, converting digital lenders into loan service providers. Talking about taking steps to secure capital, State Bank of India sold the largest tranche of additional Tier 1 or 81 bonds worth 6,872 crore rupees at the lowest rate of 7.75%. The decision comes when bank credit has been rising faster than deposit growth. And even the RBI governor has been talking about banks preparing for the worst case scenario. AT1 bonds have witnessed 18,000 crore rupees of issuances this year. On Tuesday, Business Standard reported that Canara Bank and PNB would also likely issue 3,000 crore worth of AT1 bonds this week. While banks and markets have been quick to adopt technology, the insurance sector is playing catch up. Last week, the insurance regulator, IRDAI, proposed that all insurance policies will need to be made available in the DMAT format by December 2022. The decision will also help individuals create a portfolio of insurance policies. It has also been mulling the setting up of an independent agency to probe cases of fraud. Given the proposed changes, the insurance sector is expected to get a fill-up in the coming years. Banks have been enjoying the success delivered post-COVID as they registered record-breaking profits. But can the streak continue in the coming months as rates rise? Business Standards Manojit Saha had a conversation with IDBI Bank MD and CEO Rakesh Sharma on the evolving landscape and the bank's medium-term growth strategy. Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Banking Show. After incurring loss for 13 consecutive quarters, IDBI Bank ret returned to profitability in the fourth quarter of 2019-20. Since then, there was no turning back. Along with profitability, the bank has improved asset quality, and now the provision ratio, pro provision coverage ratio stands at more than 90%. To speak to the person behind the turnaround, we today have Rakesh Sharma, MD and CEO, IDBI Bank. Mr. Sharma, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, IDBI Bank is now firmly on a profit path. What is the near-term growth strategy for the bank, say, in the next three years? Now, the growth strategy, if we discuss, first, in terms of business, of course, as you know, earlier the bank was under PCA and there were a lot of many instructions, uh, restrictions were there. But now we have planned 10 to 12% growth 
both in retail msme and uh, large credit also but our focus will be in mainly in mid corporate where uh, you know the um, good quality of advances will be available but uh, we are now uh, growing in all the fields because as you know the our uh, retail to credit uh, that corporate credit uh, percentage is 63 to 37% so more or less we will like to maintain that as far as profitability is concerned you will uh, see uh, upward uh, uh, uprise in the profit by operating profit also and net profit also because uh, most of our nps have already been provided for and as you have rightly said that our provision coverage ratio is 97% slippages are also under control so in all respects we are expecting good growth uh, in the coming area years while the the profitability has improved and asset quality has improved the stock of uh, gross npa is still high which is around 20% uh, what is the plan and strategy to reduce that stock? So once upon a time, about three years back, the gross NPA was 31%. So by accel making accelerated provisions and by making recoveries, we have been able to bring down the gross NPAs below 20% and net NPA is uh, standing at around 1.25%. Gross NPA, as you see, you know, the major part of our uh, the NPAs are already 100% provided. If we do write-off, uh, technical write-off for those 100% uh, provided accounts, my gross NPA can be uh, less than 2%, but because of some tax implications, we are not doing that. But of course, I agree that we have to reduce our gross NPAs. So the major strategies will be, one, of course, uh, is uh, recoveries through NCLT, negotiated settlement route, and OTS route also. And um, partly, of course, we are also thinking of transferring some of the assets to NARCL, which, uh, of course, we were expecting somewhere in the June quarter, but uh, slightly it was delayed. But in the, uh, by, I think, Q3 and Q4, we will be able to transfer uh, some accounts to NARCL. We have identified accounts worth 11,000 crore. So out of that, um, around 4,000 is already technically written off. So remaining 7,000 crore will be transferred to NARCL. So this will help us in reducing the gross NPAs below 15%. And that is by target to reduce the gross NPA below 15% by 31st March 23. Sir, uh, IDBI Bank in recent past has shown very aggressive strategy on recovery. Uh, recovery figures are also very healthy. Can you throw some light? What is the recovery strategy going ahead? Yes, uh, one thing I would like to clarify that, you know, during this COVID period, uh, the uh, some recoveries through NCLT had slowed down, but we continued making our recoveries in, uh, uh, in by way of negotiated settlements and uh, uh, one-time settlements. And also the small accounts by uh, launching some uh, non-discretionary schemes uh, for uh, one-time settlement. So uh, this year we have targeted recovery of around 4,000 crore. And Q1, my recovery was 1,100. So we have already achieved 25% of that target. So I'm quite hopeful that uh, this year we will be uh, able to recover uh, more than 4,000 crore. I know IDB, IDBI bank deposit rates are, are, are much are probably the best in the industry, slightly other, other than other large public sector banks also uh, at 6.20%. Uh, do you see deposit rates going up further? One thing I would like to say that uh, we are not the highest because whenever we are making the changes in the interest rates, we always compare with the peer banks. So we are somewhere in the middle, neither lowest nor the highest ratio. But of course, we try to give the, uh, you know, the competitive, offer the competitive rates to our depositors. Because I will like to acknowledge here that when we were in uh, trouble, especially during our PCA period and the, when the bank was showing losses, it is the customers who always stayed with us. They never, you know, there was never any reduction in deposits. Whatever reduction in deposit had taken place, that was in bulk deposits. So the, the, we have to take care of the depositors. So that way we are offering quite competitive rates, but not the highest. But yes, our rates are quite good uh, you know, to attract some deposits. As far as the interest rate scenario is concerned, yes, like, you know, the uh, as you see that international uh, markets also, Fed, uh, they are also expecting to increase rates. Then inflation is also around around more than 6%. So likelihood that if uh, RBI increases the repo rate, so we'll have to also go by the uh, market 
and there may be slight increase in the interest rates keeping in the uh, view the overall market scenario but your retail as you said your retail is 63% of the total loan group uh, do you want to maintain that kind of ratio or you think some correction will take place and retail share may for slightly come down now that the corporate demand is coming back in a big way yeah in fact uh, slightly it may uh, be you know the corporate ratio may increase also but as per our board approved policy minimum that retail portion what we have stipulated that it will not go below 60% so now it is 63 but as of now i am targeting almost equal growth in all the verticals so that may this ratio may continue as it is but even if uh, the demand from corporate is more and we you know and good assets are available and we decide to grow more in credit, uh, corporate credit so the ratio we will not go below 60% for retail that because much that's a board approved policy to have retail that is kind of now we have our board approved policy is that that minimum uh, retail ratio should be 60% it was a pleasure talking to you mr sharma thank you very much for speaking to business standard thank you thank you very much I, my, my pleasure to thank you very thank much. you sir sharma says that the bank is planning 10 to 12% growth in retail msme and large segment but the focus will be on mid corporates where good quality advances will be available the challenge for banks is the slow growth of deposit rates but markets are coming to the rescue as all banks are moving towards 81 issuances but do you know what these 81 bonds are and why banks issue them our experts explain in the banking for you section In early 2020, a growing financial crisis in Yes Bank resulted in the Reserve Bank of India taking charge of the private lender and spearheading a restructuring plan. One of the consequences of the restructuring program was a huge write down in additional tier 1 or 81 bonds issued by Yes Bank. Following the write down, those who had purchased the 81 bonds lost around 10000 crore rupees subsequently regulators including sebi revamped the investment landscape for these instruments in the following year the market prices of these instruments plummeted this happened because risk aversion intensified particularly after the sebi changed norms for their valuation a degree of normalcy was restored when the regulator provided a relaxed timeline for adherence to the new norms likely after the finance ministry expressed concern about the bank's access to capital issuance of 81 bonds is a means by which banks can augment core equity capital these instruments are perpetual bonds implying that while issuers provide periodic interest payments there is no redemption of the principal amount The appeal for investors is that 81 bonds returns are typically higher than tier 2 bonds and fixed deposits. Judging by the positive response to these instruments over the last 2 and a half months, the risk aversion that prevailed after the Yes Bank debacle has subsided. Bonds issued by highly rated banks have seen a sharp decline in cut-off rates, meaning that banks have to shell out less for the capital amid high demand for their debt offerings moreover the spreads between the yields on 81 bonds and those on benchmark securities such as government bonds have compressed implying that investors are confident enough to demand a lower risk premium the reasons for the renewed enthusiasm are manifold the financial position of banks has improved significantly over the past couple of years with lenders on a stronger footing when it comes to npas moreover the government's recapitalization plans have also augmented the capital base recent rating upgrades for most banks are a testament to the improved scenario a large part of the demand also emanates from hnis amid volatile equity markets and a lack of sufficient participation in the largely institutional sovereign bond market Insurance companies too have been showing enthusiasm for 81 bonds after certain regulatory relaxations. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success so
I'm backed by the nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. Issuance of AP1 bonds is a means by which banks can augment core equity capital. These are perpetual bonds which provide periodic interest payments with no redemption of the principal amount. Credit growth is booming not just for banks but for digital lending apps as well. RBI has taken the wind out of the sails for the digital lenders with its new rules and given some semblance to the sector. Tamal Bandopadhyay explains these new rules and how they change the field of digital lending apps. Hi, Tamal. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Now, in your column this week, you discuss RBI's new norms on digital lending. Can you explain for our viewers what digital lending is and at what's its share in the overall lending? Well, digital lending actually, you know, got a big fillip during the COVID period. Uh, I don't have any, any latest data of digital, what's the size of digital lending, but I'm quoting a Reserve Bank of India report of its uh, November 2021 report that it spoke about between 2017 and 2020, the loans given through this digital mode has go had gone up more than 12 fold from 11,671 crore to 1.42 trillion. Since then it has gone up substantially. Uh, and it also mentioned that as, on, as in February, 2021, there were 1,100 lending apps, 600 of which were illegal. Hmm. So it's uh, so RBI cannot do anything about them. And Reserve Bank of India governor, in a recent uh, public uh, speech, he spoke about that's the, the police need to uh, take care of that. So this is a new genre of uh, lenders, uh, which is uh, globally happening. It's a free for all. I mean, 20, 30, 40 percent uh, kind of interest rate they charge and they harass people. There have been at least 12 cases of uh, suicides uh, driven by this uh, so-called digital lenders. Uh, that's what the media report says. So it's, a, it's not a very transparent world. Uh, it's a high interest rate, a lot of harassment. And it has been growing at a phenomenal space. That had prompted Reserve Bank of India to come up with the new norms. Now, what's changed post RBI guidelines and how does it affect lenders and borrowers both? Well, everything has changed because earlier what was happening, the digital lenders were on their own. I mean, from where they source the money, if uh, Ishan, you are a borrower, you, you don't know. Um, the money comes to you. And this is between, I am a digital lender, it's between you and me. I charge whatever I want. And I, then if you fail to in your repayment, I harass you. And I may even force you to commit suicide. That's the case. But now what happens is this is a new norm. Reserve Bank of India has made the digital lenders nothing but a carrier or a platform. So it has to be, that means... Uh, me as a digital lender comes in between Ishan and the bank. So I am representing a bank or an NBFC or a financial institution. The fi it is the contract will be between Ishan and that financial institution. I am just a middleman uh, and I will ensure what will I do? I will source, uh, I will source or generate uh, the, the loan applications. I will make sure that uh, you are credit worthy, all these guys, and I will make sure the collection. But everything else, meaning the contract will be between the bank stroke, NBFC stroke, any other lender and the borrower. And the contract will have everything right from the tenure of the loan, the size of the loan, the interest rate charge, the penal interest rate charge if you fail, the fees, uh, the insurance fees, the processing fees, how many installments it will take, the entire tenure, so on and so forth. And there is no way it can be changed midway. So mm -hmm. uh, as a fallout of this, I think the interest rate also will go down. Now you highlight this interesting phenomenon of harassment that used to take place and everything. But the RBI rules don't take care of the illegal digital lending, right? The government now is talking about a whitelist from the RBI and everything. So will that solve the problem here? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, finance minister spoke about that. And it spoke about that uh, be before that one piece of data, uh, you know, 
between January 2020 and March 2021, there were 2,562 customer complaints and majority of them are related to the illegal apps. So illegal apps actually are running the show and uh, RBI has uh, said that it can't do much about it. It's a, it's a law and order thing. And you know, it's a stay, uh, uh, money lending is a state subject. So what the uh, final minister has announced that there will be a white list or an online registry of the legal uh, apps. Will it solve the problem? I don't think so. Because you need massive literacy drive in the hinterland. Who will have the access to this kind of registry? So on the one hand, we need to have a coordinated efforts between regulator, between Ministry of Corporate Affairs, uh, state government, police authorities, etc., etc., to have a crackdown. On the other hand, we need to have a massive, we need to have a massive digital literacy drive. We had a financial literacy drive earlier. Now it's time ripe for a digital literacy drive. Now, and the government is commenting on how inflation cannot just be a domain of monetary policy. What do you make of that statement, one? And does it mean that we are looking at more aggressive rate hikes in the next meeting? Well, if you see. Uh, Yes, uh, the worry is it is 7% against the consensus estimate of 6.9%. So after a, a month, it has gone back to 7% again. Uh, in July, it was less than 7%, 6.71. And it's for eight months in a row, it is above the Reserve Bank of India band, uh, that's 6% after that. 54% uh, of inflation basket, it belongs to food and beverages. So can RBI do much about it? So there the role of the government comes in. You have been talking, you know, uh, the various taxes on rice exports and everything else coming up. So this, uh, this, had, this has an impact on inflation. So yes, government needs to play a critical role. Government has a role. Reserve Bank of India will meet by the end of this month. Now, till now, you are talking about the rate hike between 25 and 35 bips. Uh, now, after this, uh, people are talking about between 35 and 50 basis point. And uh, mind you, before that, there will be a uh, US Federal Reserve meeting. And yes. probably we get 75, we'll see 75 basis point rate hike by the US Federal Reserve. Yeah. But I will stick to my, um, what I had earlier said. I would like to believe that uh, the time is, uh, for a 35 bips rate hike, not a 50 bips. Because, you know, uh, we need to see uh, uh, if Reserve Bank of India is confident about its inflation projection way ahead, which is which will come down below 6% in the last quarter, if mm -hmm. it's confident about it. Uh, there is no need to hurry. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thanks. Tamal highlights that the government needs to focus on digital literacy to steer people clear of illegal apps. With regards to the monetary policy, he sticks by his forecast of 35 basis point rate hike in September. Last week, we asked you whether the government needs to give more support on education loans, given the rising cost of education. We thank you for the phenomenal response. 80% of the people said that the government needs to do more. This week, we wish to know if you think RBI should liberalize rules on fintech innovations. Our polls will open on Friday and you can respond on Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, LinkedIn and our website. We'll be back next week with more news and analysis. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.